Okay, so everybody, welcome. Uh, my name is Ilko Silva. I work for the uh, networking services team, like the last presenter. Um, and today, I would like to talk about, actually the title is quite nice, it says, can OBS be further optimized? Uh, but if you read the description, uh, it's more a little bit more about um, finding a good baseline and then tune the performance um, so we get steady results. Um, so what is Open vSwitch actually about? So Open vSwitch is a general purpose uh, virtual switch that uses OpenFlow rules uh, to make the uh, switching decisions. And I think what I want to emphasize here is the general part, uh, because it means it should work in all scenarios, and it's not really optimized for a specific scenario to, uh, to do the best performance. So if you would like to increase the performance, a very easy way is just to add more CPU resources to it. Um, and then you can increase the uh, performance for probably all the scenarios that it's been running on. Um, so what is the performance for OBS DPDK? What is it based on? So the data path for OBS DPDK is basically, it's a dedicated thread or a number of dedicated threads on a dedicated uh, set of CPUs, which are only used for packet forwarding. And what it does, it gets uh, at most 32 packets from a specific driver, reads those 32 packets, and then tries to classify them uh, with specific flows that are configured. Um, and then when all the flows are, all the 32, up to 32 packets are classified, um, they will be grouped by flow and then all the actions are taken. So they're basically, they put, if you have 32 packets come in, they're for two different set of flows. We will group them together, process all the actions for one, then process all the actions for the other. Um, the idea behind is that your cache is nicely hot, so you would do the same uh, packet processing on all those packets. Um, and then once all the actions are done, based on the group, the packets are sent out. So that means that packets get reordered um, uh, per flow, uh, not per flow, but per uh, uh, set of flows. So you might see packet reordering in that scenario. So what is really influencing uh, the packet performance in general is one of the main things is the flow lookup that takes most of the time. Um, so there is a different uh, set of actions that is taken when the packet comes in to figure out what the flow is. Uh, on the DPDK data path, it first tries to do an exact match, so it calculate the hash uh, over the five tuples of the packet. Um, and once those five tuples are known, it will try to see if it's in the cache. Um, this cache is limited, uh, I think about 8K on default. Um, if it hits the cache, the packet is forwarded directly and we're good to go. Um, if it misses, there is a secondary, well, there is a new uh, lookup, which is the signature match, the SMC. It is newly introduced in OBS uh, and it's still in experimental phases, so it's disabled by default, but it, it adds another layer of caching. Um, and then you have the data path classifier as the next level. If it finds the flow there, uh, it will go back into the tree, so it will program the EMC cache or SMC cache if you have that enabled and you will go <coughs> back and the packet gets sent out. If you even miss the data path classifier, you go to the OpenFlow protocol classifier. Um, and I, I marked it as red because if you look at the kernel data path, the first three items, the blue ones, are actually the ones that happen inside of the kernel. So that's the data path part. There's different caches, but it's the same principle. Um, and then if you hit the red type, that basically means you go to user space. So the kernel module is calling user space um, and does the lookup. Um, and this is the part that the handler threads are taken care of. So if you see a lot of CPU utilization in your kernel data path on the handler threads, that's probably because you have a lot of packets going to a slow path because there is no, no flow in the data path. Uh, what else influences the performance for OBS DPDK? I think one thing is the, the mutexes and the locks that are in the code in several places. Um, there are very limited places uh, in the data path that have locks, but there are some like bonding, for example, has one known. Um, and then the other thing that I think is probably one of the biggest one is the, the syscalls. So they try to make the data path for DPDK as syscall less as possible, uh, but there are still syscalls being taken due to the existing infrastructure uh, of the legacy, or legacy, the kernel data path of OVS, so the, the slow path lookups. Um, one of them, I think that takes the most syscalls, maybe not the most CPU, but the most syscalls, um, is the, uh, the, the locking and the latches, the latch that you see here, which is used for the RCU a lot, because they use lot, their own RCU library within OBS, and that actually takes care by waking up the thread by using a write call, and you see quite a lot of them. 
I have a nice example later on. Um, and then the cross NUMA uh, communications also. If you have two virtual machines, both in a different uh, NUMA node, uh, their memory transfer is going to be at least, you know, has to cross the uh, interconnect of the two CPUs. So what can we do as a developer? So <clears throat> there's things you can change inside the code that might make it faster for, for a specific use case. Um, one of the things that's recently been added is the partial hardware upload, which basically, um, there's a nice blog from Flavio on that as well, on our blog page. Um, but what it does, it takes the package that come in, it tries to match up the, the flow, and then put the marker in the hardware saying that if you see this flow again, let me know what the flow ID, sort of flow marker flow identifier is, so you don't have to actually go up and do all the lookups and do the cache, uh, you, uh, uh, sorry, the hashing algorithm, so you directly know which flow to pick out of your table. Um, of course, full hardware upload, it's being worked on currently upstream, that will actually take off all the CPU load, or at least most of the CPU lo load of the uh, packets. Um, you can disable the EMC cache if you have a lot of uh, traffic streams flowing at the same time and you will be trashing your EMC cache. Um, it doesn't really make sense to have it enabled because you, you still have the overhead of calculating the hash and trying to find it so you can rid of that part. Maybe you can come up with better hashing algorithms uh, to use. Uh, SMC is one of the examples that's recently been added. Another thing is if you have multiple threads that to actually pull your packet drivers. Um, some interface might be very busy and a couple of other interface might be very uh, you know, relaxed. They have a couple of packets coming in. You can do rebalancing of the queues through different, uh, uh, different cores. Um, if you have a very busy core that's doing three queues <coughs> and you have another core that's only doing one queue, you might be able to shift some of that workload to a different core. Um, uh, so you have you know, more balance within your processing. You can try to see if you can remove locks within the system. It's going to be a tough thing because a lot of the code is shared between the kernel data path uh, and the DPDK data path and maybe additional data paths coming up uh, in the future. So it might be hard to change because it's, you know, it's an embedded thing within the entire infrastructure. Um, and then we can see we can remove syscalls. Um, some ideas that I was uh, looking at and it's like maybe we can offload some of the syscalls that take a lot of time uh, to a separate thread. Uh, into the system. It requires probably you know, another core, dedicated core, but I think there's other uh, features that actually are also moving to having an additional core in the system, so maybe we can you know, move stuff out. Uh, an example is for if you have configured a uh, external controller um, and you have an unknown packet that needs to be sent to the controller, currently what, what, what happens is that the UDP uh, transmission in the kernel data path happens inside the PMD thread. So basically you're gonna call uh, a write inside your PND thread saying, I would like to send out this UDP packet, which is quite uh, costly if you do it on your uh, worker thread, because even if you, a couple of you know, million nanoseconds not processing packets on ingress, you're probably gonna drop some. So that's a, that could be a nice enhancement. So even if we do all that work, I mean, the main question is, will we increase uh, the performance? And I think the, the answer is that it all depends on your environment. Like, we've, like I've seen um, in the past is that everybody has a different environment and people test like different environments as well. So if you look at people that are doing like upstream development on OBS, they tend to try to optimize a specific use case or their specific use case and they don't uh, test with all the other possibilities of people uh, whether you're using OBS because OBS is general. Sometimes you might miss a test case for someone else. Uh, so you don't really get the performance increase. You might even get a decrease in your specific scenario while other people will get an increase uh, in their scenario. Uh, <coughs> so what are the dependencies for your environment? I think the number of PND threads you have might be an, an issue, uh, why, why you get a better or worse performance. Um, for example, if you have uh, 15 virtual machines with all one queue, you need to pull 15 virtual machines queues constantly. Um, if you have one thread and you pull all those 14, 15 queues on one thread, if you make a performance optimization in your, your driver uh, for that um, uh, vhost user, you might get the performance increase because you're pulling like the 15 ones. Um, but if you um, have some of the parts that you have a hardware driver pulling, 
you know, if you make vhost optimizations and you only have hardware drivers, it doesn't really help you in that scenario. So it's pretty important what kind of uh, drivers you have, how many queues you have assigned to it, because you might be pulling you know, 15 queues on one hardware device driver. Um, so that if you make an optimization in the hardware device, then it might help you there. Um, something that's very important is, is the, um, the open flow rules that you program and how often you change the open flow rules. Because if you have your data path flow rules programmed, your open flow rules are there, and then you make a decision to remove all your open flow rules and insert a new set, that basically means you're gonna flush your caches and every packet that comes in from a new flow needs to be relearned. So if you like every second change your open flow rules, that means that you might get a lot of flushes and you get a lot of packets to your, uh, uh, to your learning, to the learning phase, going all the way up in the cache diagram that I showed earlier. Um, then of course also the data path rules that are, are active in your system. Um, so let's say that you have a million flows going into your system. Uh, in theory, you could have a hundred data, a million data path flows in your system. But what the system does is that it times them out. So after three seconds, no traffic, um, your flow gets removed. If a new, someone else opens a web browser, gets a new website, that flow needs to get added. So if you have short-lived sessions or long-lived session, that also influences the performance uh, of your system because you need to refresh your, your cache or not. You need to do the additional lookups or not. Uh, so it's not only the volume of the traffic, the type of the traffic, uh, but it's also like, how many sessions are you tearing down, up and down in a second? Uh, do you have long-lived sessions, short-lived sessions, stuff like that? Is it only TCP because you have different, you have a complete flow set? Is it like a completely different protocol that you're using or a custom protocol uh, that you're using? So, <clears throat> I think from an upstream perspective, what we really need is a bunch of reference architectures where we can say, you know, in the field, people using X, Y, Z, a set of users are using uh, another set of, set of systems. So maybe some people use it like um, uh, maybe only a couple of virtual machines and that's it. Other people might be running 100 virtual machines, but with low latency traffic. And other people might run it with high latency traffic or a million flows or only 10K flows. Um, that way, if you can test it, if someone makes a change upstream, you can maybe run your baseline tests, like maybe the five or six, whatever baseline tests or setups you have. Um, and then you can see for which specific use case you have an increased performance, and you can see for what specific use case you have maybe have a decreased performance. And then it's, it's easier to make a decision, you know, are we going to apply the patch or are we going to enact the patch and say, you know, it needs a bit more optimization for a specific use case. Um, so how do we get that data? And I'm, I'm looking at you guys that I think if there are people that are willing to share some of the data, um, then that would be at least a good start to create a use case. Um, what I currently do is I test like my scenario normally with what we call a PVP test and I have a link later on if you wanna take a look at it. But basically you send a bunch of traffic in, you loop it back in a virtual machine and then you, you send it back out. And based on the number of flows, would you please close the door? <laughs> uh, so what I've done is, um, what would be nice to get? So I, I put a list up here with some stuff that would be nice to get. Um, dumping some of the flows, dumping some of the ports. So we have an ID what actually uh, is used in the system. Um, and we can probably come up with a reference architecture for that so when we are testing. I'll just go quickly go over it. I'll, it's in the slides that are online, so you can, if you are willing to share your data, you can look it up. The other thing that I have is the syscalls. So I've been, I'm able to get whatever syscall I want in my setup, and I, but it's not clear how to optimize for what syscall. Because in some scenarios, or at least in all my scenarios, it's in the common scenarios, I'm not getting a better performance if I get rid of the syscalls. Uh, but it would be nice to see what kind of additional syscalls are actually in uh, customer environments or test environments that you have, and then we can probably optimize for specifics. Um, what I've done to get an ID is um, what I do as I run a perf script for a couple of minutes, capturing all the syscalls that the PMD threads generate. Um, and then what I've done, I have a small Python script that actually um, tells me what syscalls are called for which PMD thread. Um, this is just a, the overview screen, so it doesn't really tell you much, only that you get a lot of 
a lot of them. Um, but then what it also does, it analyzes the callbacks for all the specific sets and it gives you a callback for every syscall and then collapse them. So in this case, you see, you see that you have like, uh, was it 56K of callbacks for this specific code path. So we can try to see what would be the best one to optimize if we ever you know, get time and optimize it. Um, so what's next? Uh, I think if you were willing to share it, you can send me an email. Um, and then my statement would be that I would try to you know, collect them all, try to make some general use cases out of them, share them upstream. And then for me, the ultimate goal would then be to actually add them uh, to the link that you see here, the bottom link, uh, sorry, the top link, this one. Uh, that is the script for running the PVP test. And then if I could incorporate some of those use test cases, it will be easy for me to run it against whatever you know, set of data or patches that are available. Um, and then the other link is for the uh, uh, Python script that uh, if you would like to do some analysis of the, uh, the syscalls. So that's the data I have. So hopefully there are some people that are willing to share some of our data and then we can maybe have a better testing uh, upstream. So that's it. Any questions? Yeah, very limited time. So. Have you checked uh, uh, OPNFB's project for the switch testing? Sorry? OPNFB has this uh, open platform project. OpenNFV? Yeah, yeah, I. Yeah. Okay, if I have the open NFV testing, this is the VS Perf one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever tried to set it up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's the answer. So, so yeah, it, it's possible to use that as well. It has similar features as what I have, but it's really hard to set up because it requires you to have a defined setup, and it will do everything for you. It will configure everything, download the virtual machines, and in a development environment, it's not really friendly because you have your own machine. You really want to run a test. And with this, I just have one command line. I run, I get the graph or whatever I want, and it's done. So yeah, but it does the it does the performance testing for you as well. It has the same features as this. Yeah, no, my question is more around the lines, but you should know, work with this for like a community. Like, I mean, if everyone is doing his own side of testing, etc. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it will be yeah. But the thing is with the open the that test suite, it only does like we send wire speed traffic, see what the performance is. We do RFC. Uh, 2455 test and that's it and there is no environment out there that 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 mimics that environment right tell me like one customer that has the RFC 2445 yeah. type environment right and that's the problem because you can opt the thing is you can optimize to your likings for that specific test scenario but the performance for a real life scenario might be really bad Yeah, yeah, I think the automatic optimization is outside of vSwitch. Oh, it's outside of vSwitch. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so the question was, um, th is there any work in progress to optimize the flow set? So if you configure the rules to optimize them, that's the question, right? So from an OVS open flow perspective, if for rule optimization, we will rely on the open flow controller to do that, to get the most, you know, the best set of open flow rules. And then the data path will do its own optimization. So if you look at the slides, a couple of you see the SMC. Those will do try to do some optimization on the given flow to be faster to look it up. So there is some optimization there. No more questions. All right. Thank you.